Young Slovakians do battle with black-clothed ninjas, the Slovakian anti-terrorist police. Until now, the direct action environmental protester has been a Western phenomenon. Now all that is changing, as young East Europeans discover that they too can use protest to make themselves heard. No independent environmental groups existed before communism fell in 1989. As popular movements swept away the Soviet era, young East Europeans had had their first taste of what could be achieved through protest. In the mountains of Slovakia, secret camps are occupied by protesters watching out for loggers who are slowly attacking the country's pristine and ancient forests. Rasto Mechanik is 21 and a full-time campaigner. You couldn't get involved in direct actions during the communist era. If they happened, they were ruthlessly suppressed. The era of direct action dawned after communism fell. I don't think actions like ours would have succeeded under the communist regime. They just didn't happen. But it's time for Rasto to move on. He's due at another protest camp nearly 300 kilometers away. I think not just the government, but society as a whole in post-communist states is reserved about direct action. You see the same distant attitude amongst ordinary people as the government. They're not friendly. Activists break into the Mohovsa nuclear power plant to hang a giant banner on one of its cooling towers. This action marked the birth of Slovakia's anti-nuclear movement. Slovakians were not used to seeing such open revolt, and the European Bank was embarrassed by its loan to complete the old Soviet-style nuclear reactor. Bratislava, the Slovakian capital, it's surrounded by inefficient, power-hungry industry. Slovakia's energy needs are three times that of a West European country. Rasto and other activists ask why their government is building new nuclear plants instead of cutting energy consumption. This is a protest camp in the small village of Nova Dedina. I think it will take another 10 years before attitudes towards our actions or generally towards environmental questions change. At least 10 years. The activists approached 80 villages in the region of the power plant. The mayor from this town was the only one to write back and went on to open his village to the environmentalists. I used to be chief technical controller at the factory, at the exact production line where the nuclear components are produced. For Mohovsa, as well as other nuclear power stations in the Czech Republic or Hungary. Nowadays, nuclear power is useful in spite of everything, although we all know that it's a bad legacy for future generations. We'll leave them something they won't be able to deal with for several centuries. The village people are quite afraid of everything what's strange, what comes from... They don't use this kind of work. Yeah? They were, uh, they're still living in a, another, another decade, yeah? And still living in a communism regime. So it's the same with the Mokhovce power plant. They, they cannot realize there can be other opinions, other alternatives. There is only one way for them still. I also considered it my duty to show our citizens that we have young people with a close relationship with nature and an interest in protecting the environment and in other similar activities which they're carrying out in this town. 
a tým ďalším aktivitám, ktoré tu v tejto dedine vykonávajú. In appreciation for the opportunity to put their message across, the activists have pledged to clear up the neglected village graveyard. Labeled by the media as anarchists, the impression they make on locals is of paramount importance. The town's youngsters are clearly impressed, but reports are filtering back of an old lady who was frightened by the protesters asking her for cigarettes. They're supposed to be banned from the camp, along with drugs, alcohol, and even coffee. It's called being straight edge. We're not going to advertise the fact that we don't take drugs, alcohol and cigarettes, because then people will know that we've had a problem with these things before. These are conservative people, and I don't care if you do it elsewhere, but I do care if somebody does it here in the camp. Some of you might have a problem with these things. Some of you might think you're going to do what you like and not take any notice of us. If I say this, it doesn't mean you can go five meters away and get drunk and come crawling back here. All part of winning hearts and minds are the clean energy brigades. Villagers sign up for a visit by the team to improve their home's energy efficiency. I'm putting insulation on the door of this old house. We've already put uh, uh, something like a brush under the door. It also says, stops the air and dust and the energy loses. The old grandmother, she also wants to buy the energy saving light bulb. An old house is made a bit greener and a bit warmer and this grandmother is a satisfied customer. In rural, more backward communities, there's a powerful logic to producing electricity at almost any cost. Even for activists, there is paperwork to be done. They take a moment to enlighten an otherwise indifferent villager on the spectre of the Mohovsa power plant just down the road. Unfortunately, it's still very deeply rooted in the Slovakian psyche that if anybody's opinion differs from the ruling class, he must be damned, that he's not entitled to be heard at all. So I think the prevalent opinion is that people don't agree with things that go against official Slovakian policy. I think it doesn't have to be a bad thing, provided it's well built and it doesn't explode like in Russia, Chernobyl. So why can't we have one as well? It's only the Austrians who have some objections against the plant. The problem is also that Mohovsa absorbs a huge amount of money. But I couldn't imagine being without electricity and having to use a petrol lamp. This morning, the activists wake up with a sense of expectation. An action is on. Secrecy is paramount. One word let slip and the police could be alerted. The van is loaded up and they set out for neighboring Austria, one of the most liberal of West European nations. Now we are going to Austria to join during this protest, but we don't know exactly what what kind of action it will be. So it's 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 not very safe to talk about this. We are homes. The activists have arrived and begin their preparations.
They're celebrating in the old Austrian town of Bratz. Austria has just taken up the presidency of the EU, and the East Europeans want to enlist them to fight their anti-nuclear cause. The Slovakian protesters know Austria is nervous about the old Soviet reactors still operating just across her border. After a national vote, Austria abandoned all nuclear energy. But the activists have come west to emphasize that Austria is still at risk. They want the Austrian government to bring pressure on West European companies who maintain the substandard nuclear reactors and also build new ones. We call it like nuclear colonialism that the Western companies, they lost their profits in the Western Europe and they are, they are coming now to the Eastern Europe and the developing countries and they are, to, they are trying to find their place on the market there. And that's what we don't like. But the Austrian action is muted. Some of the protesters who've traveled hundreds of kilometers to get here think it just wasn't radical enough. Maybe this kind of action is effective as a part of uh, big campaign, but maybe it's not necessary for people to travel long distance for like this action like this. I think any action makes sense and especially in this one we are protesting against the nuclear enlargement in Central and Eastern Europe. We have to raise up our anti-nuclear activities very often in Austria or, or even to do the campaign in very close cooperation with Greenpeace Austria due to the fact that our politicians, our decision makers don't pay almost any attention to the protests of um, Slovak inhabitants, uh, especially Slovak environmental NGOs uh, in our own country. Back in Slovakia, the environmentalists' protests are not dealt with so comfortably. They're seen as a risk to the new mantra of free commerce and big business. But Slovakian activists say it's exactly the new business ethos which makes them most angry. We have observed in last time a very clear and strong attack of Western nuclear firms uh, going to the east uh, due to the uh, much lower environmental awareness of uh, public in eastern countries and due to the fact also that uh, nuclear power is very strongly supported by political and economic uh, leaders. The reactor in the Mohovsa nuclear plant has few of the safety features of western nuclear facilities. If there's an earthquake, the core could crack and radioactivity would be free to seep across Europe as it did at Chernobyl. One of the basic problems is that Slovakia as a country is trying to enter the EU and it should respect the safety regulations of the EU. Unfortunately, this nuclear power plant will never meet those safety regulations, which means that for 25 years there will be a nuclear plant which could never have been put into operation in the EU. In neighboring Poland, they're culturally a lot closer to the West. Poland will be one of the first to be admitted to the EU. In recent years, Poles have feasted on Western products. Multinationals and their advertising have swamped Polish cities. Here, consumerism is the name of the game. But Polish activists are also more developed than most of their Eastern peers. There's more of a tradition of popular movements here, and Poles have been watching their counterparts in England closely. They've taken up the British style of anti-roads protests. It's not really discussion about motorway in this country. It's just, we need motorway and it's nothing more because it's like in West Europe. But, but if you see careful what, they, what they're doing, it's, the big, it's, it's just big business for the, 
for the European Union and for big companies, most of them from West. As leader of the Polish branch of Earth First, Jacek Polowski is a key personality. Like most, he's a student and struggles to survive. With little social welfare available, activists here are poor and have to be dedicated. It means there are few of the excesses of Western crusties. as a strict leadership structure, and drugs are almost unheard of. They're disciplined and well-organized. Will joining NATO and the European Union force the Polish government to approve the building of new motorways? There is pressure on Poland, and as a matter of fact, the European Union itself is investing money in building roads in Poland. This money, of course, goes back to Europe because all the companies that build the motorways are from the West. Jacek is from the new generation of East Europeans. He, along with many here, is searching for a fresh approach. He regularly visits England. It's where he gets many ideas for his own campaigns. He claims he gets impatient with British protesters as they are too much talk and not enough action. But then he reasons they can afford to be. It's much more easy, especially that they have some kind of support from this society. Every week, money from the government, I mean the doll. And you know, it's quite easy to be, to be activist if you... Uh, it's not easy, but possible to be activist here then you when you have the money to for food for your life you know for your house but in Poland it's impossible here he can share stories and learn of the latest tactics for evading the police they're all keen to hear of his most recent action which has caused great controversy in Poland and elsewhere that action involves squatting a house along the route of a proposed motorway near Poznan, but the German contractors have called out a private security company. There was a situation that the heavy machine was two meters from me. It was really dangerous and then we used stone to, to destroy the machine just to protect uh, myself and my friend. When they came on the roof, they were really aggressive. Oh yes, we are in democracy, everybody can protest to be against some, something. But on the other side, there is no law, there is not police which, which control the eviction. Because the German company paid the uh, security guard, uh, security agency to to evict us, and it's it's not control on that. The contractors continued with their demolition regardless. I think that environmental NGOs are the most active in comparison with other NGOs and even I, I would say the most direct and uh, I would say courageous uh, to protest very openly and very critically uh, against the government and the state policy. In the environment movement there is some kind of discussion about violence or non-violence or about to be radical or not to be radical but I feel that, that there is something wrong and I react and it's nothing more. It's not philosophy of Gandhi, or philosophy of, to be a philosophy of anarchism. Is I'm um, against because I feel there's something wrong. In the far north of Russia, there was another nuclear demonstration this year against the Russian nuclear operator Minotaur. For three weeks, these young Russian protesters set up camp on the site of a nuclear plant due to begin construction any day. At the Minotom Nuclear HQ in the city of Epitity, the Russian activists hang a banner on the administration building. It wasn't long before the police arrived and the protesters and their banner taken away. The worst violence, though, came from the nuclear authority itself, 
The man beating up our camera operator is Mr. Danilov, the head of public relations for the Miniton Nuclear Company. Much of the old Soviet Union remains little changed from the days when demonstrations were forbidden. This is Belarus, a country which remains tightly clamped in authoritarianism. Minsk, the Belarusian capital, is a monument to the best of Soviet design, but behind its beautiful facade lie much darker secrets. The country is led by an autocratic government. There are few personal freedoms. Even worse, the country's President Lukashenko has a deep streak of fascism within him. He gave a radio interview. In it, he spoke of Hitler as a hero. Hitler formed a mighty Germany due to his strong presidential power, but the German order has been formed for centuries. Under Hitler, that formation reached its peak. And it's that which is in keeping with our idea of a presidential republic and the role of president in it. It might seem hopeless, but Belarusian activists do have support from one quarter. Many are leading Belarusian nuclear scientists who have stark memories of Chernobyl. They're here to speak against nuclear power. There's one thing I learned at the ministry, and that is that every single one of us who's worked with atomic energy is guilty. With Chernobyl just 200 kilometers from Minsk, they're anxious for Belarus to avoid the same mistakes and to steer clear of further nuclear development. The scientists are here at the invitation of these grassroots activists. It's the last phase in a unique and dangerous direct action campaign. The young people taking upon themselves this responsibility are the most important people. We older people are stuck in our ways, whilst they can see many different alternatives. Their campaign has involved months of secret planning, but this summer they began to bring the nuclear issue to a population otherwise kept in the dark. Belarus was heavily contaminated by Chernobyl's nuclear fallout, but few Belarusians know about it. For two weeks this autumn, 13 activists, many from other East European countries, did their best to change that. In a top-secret action, they marched for hundreds of miles through the Belarus countryside, they went to the proposed sites of new nuclear plants. They demonstrated where they could and were frequently arrested, shoved into police vans and dumped in the countryside. Young people understand how important this is. It concerns their future and the lives of their children. We have to think what the future generations will do with the nuclear power plants we're now building. We're leaving such a heritage, they're going to turn around and curse us. Outside the Minsk Science Academy, the activists are crowning off their summer of protest. By agreeing not to refer to the president or government policy, they've got permission to stage a small rally. I hope we will not have problems with policemen. It's not a very radical action today. Police try to control all kinds of all spheres of life, ordinary people in Belarus, often uh, uh, people who make some protests have more, more hard situation. Such a demonstration is almost unheard of here, and the police film every detail of the picket. Bypassers are astonished at the sight. Like many on this protest, Susanna is a foreigner. She's Polish. If they build nuclear power plant here in Belarus, it will have an impact on Poland as well. So it's not an issue which concerns only one country. It's the end of the first sustained campaign of its kind here. They've made little real impact on Belarusians, but in the constricted atmosphere of local politics, it's also their foreign links which have kept them from being locked up. I am biogas. Shit. You can use me as an alternative energy. Did you know shit can make electricity?
environmental organizations here in Belarus need a lot of support at the moment. They just didn't have time to develop. They were not developed during the Soviet times, obviously. And uh, well, now they are starting, but well, as you probably know, the situation is not so easy. <laughs> In Belarus, the local activists mostly stick to the underground. No concert like this could be legally performed, so they go deep into the forests. Here, they're free from their government demands, free to work out what they want and where they fit into their new world. Across Eastern Europe, the fire is burning. A youth. Ha <laughs>